Hi there, how you going? I'm breaking my own process here because today I'm doing an initial impressions video. If you're new here, I'm Tech, this is my channel Bootlosophy, and usually I only review boots after I've worn them for a few months. But just after one month, I'm already in love with this, the Parkhurst Richmond boot in Seidel's Natural Veg Retan. <laughs> So I've had these Parkhurst Richmond boots for about a month. You can watch my unboxing video up here. I am so impressed by them that I thought I'd break with my own process and bring you my initial impressions after only a month's wear. Usually, I'll review my boots after I've worn them over a few months, uh, even up to a year. I want to make sure that when I review boots, I bring you some pretty genuine impressions gathered over some real wear over some length of time. That way I hope I'm giving you some good information about how they look and wear, instead of just out of the box. But these are different. I usually wear or break in new boots by wearing them every day for two weeks solid first. Then I put them into a frequent rotation, maybe two or three times a week for the next two to four weeks, before I put them into my regular rotation of over 50 boots. On some of these 50 plus pairs of boots, uh, that might take as long as once a month. Then there are some favourites where I put them on almost every week. These are going to be favourites. They're actually factory seconds discounted from 362 US dollars to 238 dollars. To be honest, the defects uh, is so minor as to be completely inconsequential. There was a small mark on the toe cap here. I can hardly see it now and, and there was some stuff up in the stitching uh, inside the boot. Uh, sewn over a couple of times. You can't really see it. From past experience, I know that Parkhurst's quality control is pretty good. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Parkhurst is a small batch manufacturer started by founder Andrew Sabisco in 2018. They, uh, or he really, he's very much a one-man band. Uh, he focuses on unique rugged leathers on rugged but sleek looking, almost Viberg-like styles. Once that batch of hides is done, that makeup may be retired or put aside for a while until a fresh supply can be secured. Because of this unique need to almost hunt for a model and the very personal service from Andrew, Parkhurst attracts a very enthusiastic and loyal following. The Parkhurst Richmond boot is a cat toe service boot. As you can see, it follows the six inch block heel design of a World War II military style boot, particularly as worn by the US military. This is one of my favorite boot styles because you can mix it up. Depending on the materials used, it's a style that suits casual wear from rugged styles to smart and even business casual. Anything from jeans and chinos and, if it's a dressy nut leather, dress pants. In the Parker 602 last, the foot-shaped mould uh, that the boot is built around, it's a good cross between a roomy work boot and a sleek, dressier, casual boot. The 602 is a combination last. It's in D width at the heel and waist, opening up to an E width at the ball of the foot and rounding off at the toe. From the side, it looks pretty sleek, but looks are deceiving. This last volume is sufficiently generous. It doesn't have that bulbous uh, work boot toe box like an Iron Ranger or some Pacific Northwest boots, but there's enough room to wiggle my toes in it. Let's take a look at how they're put together. Um, but before we do a quick reminder, click on the like button to let me know you like this kind of video. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe as I intend to put up way more boot reviews and unboxings. I've already made enough videos about good new work construction that you can catch up on up here. And I'll go into more detail in my longer term review, of course. But just for now, I'll just recognize that the construction method here is a 360 degree good new work construction that connects the sole to the uppers. Goodyear work construction is meant to be more water resistant than simply sewing the uppers directly through the soles. Those stitch holes would let water directly inside, see? It's also meant to be easier to re-sole or re-craft when the soles wear down. The sole is a Ridgeway sole made by the same UK company that makes the ubiquitous day-night sole. It's a hard compound rubber made into these wavy lugs that provide commander sole grip without picking up gravel and stuff like a commander sole does. From the side, uh, the way the wavy lugs are placed inboard, the sole doesn't stand up like a commando. Although there is height, 
it actually looks quite flat and slim, like a Danite sole. These Richmond boots have a Benz leather midsole, a cork filling, a fiberglass shank, a leather insole, and a leather heel pad. Combined with the roomy Ridgeway sole, they feel great underfoot. Uh, they're leather lined in the toe box and up the vamp, but the shaft itself is unlined. Now, looking at the uppers, uh, the uppers are what gets me. They are Seidel's full grain veg retan leather. My understanding is that in tanning this leather, it's first preserved the salts to stop it rotting, and then at the start of the tanning process, the salts are removed, and it's tanned using a variety of vegetable tannins, oils, and waxes, hence retanned. I guess it's the first preservation is with chromium salts. Technically, it's a combination tan, but it displays all the characteristics of a veg tan leather, probably because all the salts got washed away at the start of the tanning process. It has a bright, natural, undyed colour. It smells great. It has quite a firm feel, and while supple, feels tough. It's reasonably thick, 2 mils, but stands pretty firm, unlike other softer chrome tanned leather at that thickness. Like all veg tan leathers, it feels quite stiff when you first put it on, but like all veg tan leathers, it softens with use and becomes more supple and moulds to the shape of your foot. In this case, what surprised me is that it softens so quickly after only about a week. Like all veg tan leathers, it will also absorb moisture and temporarily darken and spot if you get rain on it, but it dries back to this colour pretty quickly. I put a thin smear of boot conditioner in the first week I wore it, and that did help to hold off and uh, bead the moisture. As soon as I finish this, I am going to condition it again with a leather balm. Uh, as you can see, the leather is a matte full grain that wears and patinas quite quickly. This is a month, and it naturally feels a little dry, almost like new buck. So I think a balm will condition it and protect it without soaking in like a cream or an oil. The toe cap and heels are formed with celastic to give them shape and structure. The heel counter is stiffer than the toe box. The heel counters are external and covered by a single piece backstay which covers the heel counter and the stitching of the shaft. The toe cap is not, I think, a real toe cap. Uh, I don't think it's a layer of leather on top of the leather of the vamp and the toe box, but rather it's two pieces of leather that's sewn together the cap toe stitch. In this version of the Richmond boot, it's a triple stitch uh, in a two plus one pattern. The edge of the collar is rolled and then a piece of leather is sewn to back it as it is along the back of the hardware. The hardware is brass, uh, eight big eyelets, no speed hooks, unbacked, uh, just pressed back to hold them. In my opinion, it's very nicely proportioned, especially with these rounded wax laces. Like all Parker's boots, the tongue is unlined uh, and it's semi-gusseted up to the fourth eyelet. When I first put them on, I was quite worried about breaking them in because they felt so stiff. That's the veg tanned leather for you. But by the end of the first day, Whew, they moulded to my feet and were feeling much better. By the end of the first week, they were completely broken in and felt supple and form-fitting. Uh, now, a month later, after two weeks solid wear, and about two weeks of wearing them a couple of times a week, oh, I cannot describe how supple and comfortable they are, yet tough. They feel like lambskin gloves on my feet. The look of the leather and the comfort and fit is why I, I felt I had to do a quick review to recognise just how comfortably made these are. Even the quick breaking of the Ridgeway sole, pretty hard to break in on my earlier Richmonds and Waxy Rays Reverse Mohawk. They're now super comfortable underfoot and absorb shock really well. I'm really taken with the natural colour, the feel of it on foot and under my hands and the way that it's softened, how the leather quickly shows uh, wear and character. A couple of years ago, new to quality boots and character leathers, I would have cried to see all these scuffs and shifting around of oils and colours. Now they're a satisfaction. I can't wait to see how these are going to patina even further. I fully intend to wear them as hard as I can. I'm not going to build a house or anything in them, but I'm not going to baby them either. They're built to be worn hard, I think. Okay, so that's it, guys. Uh, just a quick record of my initial impressions. As usual, I'll keep wearing them, and I'll bring you a proper catch-up review after some wear, maybe a year's wear, to see how they're holding up. In the meantime, of course I'll bring you more boot reviews and unboxings, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss any. Until then, take care, and I'll see you soon.